In 2007, when Pope John Paul II died, over a million people filed past his plain white or plain cedar coffin in the Holy Square there. It seems like more than a four million people jammed into the, the Rome at that time and watched his funeral on big screens scattered across the city. It is estimated that more than a hundred million people, maybe even a billion people, watched his funeral on the television. But in Rome, on that day, a chant started in the crowd, and it grew and spread among the crowd. The chant that said, Santo, Subito, Santo, Subito. It seems that this chant kept spreading and spreading. Even hand-painted signs were found in the crowd. Again, Santo, Subito, which means sainthood now. It seems the fans of John Paul II said that they wanted him to become a saint immediately. That he's clearly a saint, and so why not just make it official? Well, according to a Time magazine, then um, the, his successor there um, to jo Pope John Paul II, Benedict XVI, moved as fast as he could to bring along this process. He waived the initial five-year waiting period, which would, is granted only to one other person, which is Mother Teresa of Calcutta. But still, there were several steps that had to be taken before he could be declared a saint. The fastest person to sainthood before John Paul II was one guy named Jose Maria Escriva de Balagar, who was the founder of Opus Dei. And those of you who are... Da Vinci Code people know what kind of ominous role uh, Opus Dei played in those novels and movies. He was made a saint in 2002, just 27 years after his death. Vatican watches were predicting that John Paul II would be made a saint much quicker than that, perhaps by 2010. But his actual canonization didn't take place until April 27th of 2014 because they just couldn't find a second miracle attributed directly to John Paul II. Once they found it, he was declared a saint. Made a saint in seven years, blowing away the old record by 20 years. Today is All Saints Day. The day we turn our attention to those who have died in the faith, those people who are role models of discipleship and faithfulness in our lives, people that we celebrate even now, who we join with in praise, with past saints and present saints and saints of the future. You know, when we say together with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Kadosh, 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 holy, holy, holy is our Lord. That's what we get to do in All Saints Day. Join saints of all ages in praise to our God. But what's always puzzled me is why on All Saints Day do we think about those saints who have gone before us in heaven? Why do we always default to those saints who from the past? Because if you look at Scripture, the Bible is really clear in talking about saints. From St. Paul, he's always talking not about those saints who have already gone into heaven. St. Paul is talking about those saints who are not dead yet those living in the church. Now, if you look at Matthew, at Ephesians in our Bible passage there, he writes, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints. You see, when St. Paul talks about the saints, he's talking about the church, the ecclesia, the living saints. And he says, I pray for you because of all that, you have, that they have done for you and continue to do you, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Saints are holy, said St. Paul, not because they are, have attained some moral perfection, not because they have two miracles attributed to their name, and certainly not because some church council says that they are saints. St. Paul says that we are saints because we have been chosen and set apart by God. 
marked in holy baptism with his name so that now we are chosen in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. You have been chosen by God. You have been set apart by God. And he has gathered us all together into his church and made us holy and blameless through the blood of the Lamb. That's what makes one a saint, according to St. Paul, not those other things. We are saints because God chose us and made us holy, made us kadosh. We know that God is holy. Scripture tells us that, that he is different from the world, set apart from this world of ours. And we too, as Christians, then if you follow that logic, are set apart by God in this world. And we've been given a different task than any other earthly assignments in this world. We're not holy or we're not even better than other people. <laughs> we're certainly not perfect. But what sets Christians apart is that they have been chosen by God. God has gotten a hold of our faith in our life. And he is in the process of molding us into the likeness of Christ. That's why St. Paul in, first, in Philippians 1 says that we are saints because we are in Christ Jesus. And we've been given a mission of a harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. Think about it. We... You and I are santo subito. We are saints now. Made that way because of what God has done to us and for us in Jesus Christ. The blood of Christ that has washed away our sins. The challenge really for us who are santo subito, saints now, is living in that faith and grace that God has given us. So when you ask yourself, so what are the saint signs? You know, what does a saint look like? Well, that's what Paul talks about in this text, this epistle from Ephesians. Look at chapter, or verse 15 of our text. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. You catch those saint signs there? Let's look at them individually. Saint sign number one, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Unpack that. Faith, we know, is the gift that God works in us through the power of his Holy Spirit. Faith that receives those gifts of mercy and grace and salvation that comes to us through his word and through his holy sacraments. That faith, though, is given us immediately. Our conversion, our salvation, those gifts are given to us immediately. But living that faith, that's a lifelong journey. That is a daily process that takes daily attention. Faith and living that faith is that constant invitation of Christ to come follow me. That's what a saint is pure and simple, a person saved by God, walking with Jesus to God again. Saint sign number two, love toward all the saints. What does it mean to love a saint? To bring a candle to church and light it on a high feast day? Well, that's a nice sentiment, but that's certainly not what Paul talks about in Ephesians here. Paul reminds us, as does Jesus, that love shows itself in acts of service. Love and service are synonymous in the New Testament. Paul says saints are those who show their love in practical acts of love and service toward one another. That's what loving the saints is all about. 
Look at the first in the early church there in Jerusalem, right after the resurrection of Jesus. They had gathered together. It was a community known for its care and compassion for one another, showing practical acts of love. What was the first subgroup created in the church at large? It was a diaconate, people chosen to make sure that those who were in need and the widows were taken care of. Paul says in Romans, contribute to the needs of the saints. He says, show hospitality to the strangers. In Timothy, Paul commends the widows for showing hospitality, for washing the, saint, the feet of the saints, for helping the afflicted. St. Paul spearheaded a collection for the church of Rome because they were suffering from a severe famine. And he calls that collection a special ministry for the saints. You see, in the church now, as in the early church, love has to be more than a word. Love is service in action. Saint sign number three, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And this is something that God gives us now, not sometime in the future when we enter the heavenly realms. Verses 17 to 19 of our text today. I pray that the Lord of your that the Lord of our that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know them, so that with the with the, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the work of his great power. You see, saints believe that God is in front of them, leading them, not stuck behind them. God is leading us into the future and he's giving us the spirit of wisdom and revelation to join him in the work that he's already doing among us. A generation ago, there was an entertainer named Gracie Allen. She had a quote that I remember. One of her quotes was, don't put a period where God has placed a comma. Think about that. Don't put a period where God has placed a comma. Saints take that seriously because saints believe that God is leading them into the future, giving them new wisdom, new understanding, new insights. God is leading them to find the work that he is already doing so that they can join him in the mission of bringing other people to his eternal home, making saints of other people through the blood of Christ. So what does it take then to be santo subito, saints now? Faith in our Lord Jesus, love toward all the saints, a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Now, if you walk out of here uh, a little while later, and ask people on the street, you know, what makes one a saint, most likely you'll get the answer that, well, that's an honor given by the Vatican after a long and drawn out ecclesiastical process. <laughs> but that's not what St. Paul says. St. Paul has saints in a totally different category. St. Paul says saints are those who have faith in their Lord Jesus, who lo have love toward all the saints, you have a spirit of wisdom and revelation. These are the miracles of the saints. You don't need two post-mortem miracles. You need the three pre-mortem miracles that God works in you. The miracle of faith that takes a heart dead in trespasses and sin and makes it alive in our Lord Jesus Christ. The miracle of love toward the saints that God works in us because he has first loved us in Jesus Christ, giving his life so that we can have life now and forever. And the miracle of hope, the hope that comes to us 
that even though we have trials and troubles in this world, that spirit of wisdom and revelation reveals to us that deliverance and victory is already ours in our Lord Jesus Christ. Saints are not classified that way by people. God chooses us to be saints. You are santo subito, saints now, through the miracle of the blood of Christ, the miracles of faith, hope, and love. And now may the peace of Christ, which surpasses our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let's stand and make confession of this awesome God that we serve and worship by speaking together the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess. <laughs> 